before we go to the core of linear programming, let's discuss first the basics of linear inequalities in two variables. Linear inequalities in two variables will have these four possible forms. Note that both a and b should not be equal to zero. That is, if a is equal to zero, we're just left with y as our variable at the left side. So as if b is zero, we're left with x as our variable at the left side. Next, let's recall how to graph these equations. We do have many methods in graphing linear equations. If you want to review these methods, just click the eye icon there at the upper corner of the screen and you will be redirected to those videos. But for this topic, we will use the easiest and fastest way and that will be using intercepts form. It's preferable that you have to watch first the video about intercept form so that this would be easier for you to understand. As discussed in that video, we will just have to make x equal 0, then we have to solve for y. After that, we will make y equal 0 this time and we will solve for x. If you are still having a hard time with operations of integers, just click the eye icon there at the upper right corner of your screen so that you will be redirected to that suggested video. Again, if you feel like you're still being confused about this method here, it's advisable that you have to watch the video about X and Y intercepts. Now what if we have to graph this time instead of equations, inequalities? That would be we have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to instead of the equal signs that we had earlier. The reason why we recalled how to graph linear equations is that if we are to graph linear inequalities, we just have to graph first the associated linear equation and that line would be boundary for the desired region. We just have to be careful about using a solid line and a dashed line. That is, if we have equal symbols with our inequalities, the graph would be a solid line. But if we don't have the equal signs, like if we have just greater than or less than, dashed line will be used instead. Let's now plot the points that we had solved. Notice that for our y values, we have 5 and 2 here. So we know that our space for our y value there at the top will have max 5. As for our x, we have a positive 15 and a negative 3. So we know that the right side will have as much as 15 units and the left side just need at least 3 units. Again, if you want to review about plotting points, we have a separate video about that topic, so just click that eye icon there for that suggested video. Let's use different colors for different points so that it's easier for us to review later.
So the graph of x plus 3y equals 15 would be passing through the points 0, 5, and 15, 0. So the points 0, 2, and negative 3, 0 would be the points for the graph 2x minus 3y equals negative 6. Let's now move to the next step. This time we have to pick a test point that is not on the boundary line. Definitely we can have any test point. But I advise that the easiest point that we'll be using would be the origin or the 0, 0. And the 0, 0 will be substituted as coordinates in the given inequality. If this test point satisfies the inequality, we will shade the region containing it. And if not, we will shade the other side. Let's picture this out more by continuing to our example. Since 0, 0 is not on the boundary line that we had earlier, we can have this as a test point. Considering our original inequality, which is x plus 3y greater than or equal to 15, substituting 0 to x and 0 to y will have this. Notice that 0 is not greater than or equal to 15. Therefore, 0, 0 does not satisfy the inequality x plus 3y greater than or equal to 15. Similarly, for our second inequality, we'll have this. And still, 0 is not less than or equal to negative 6, and so 0, 0 does not still satisfy inequality here. As noted, if 0 does not satisfy the inequality, we will not shade the region containing it. And since 0 is below the line A and 0 does not satisfy the inequality A, we will shade the upper region instead. Notice that 0, 0 is still below the inequality B. And since 0, 0 does not satisfy that inequality, we will shade the other region instead. With these shaded regions, when we say feasible region, feasible region should be the region wherein we have both shades of inequality. Thus, the feasible region for these two inequalities will be the region wherein we have both blue and green shades. So we may now erase this region that does not satisfy both of the inequalities. Let's verify if this feasible region is correct. That is, if you pick a point, say, 2, 6, and this 2, 6 is part of the feasible region, this point should satisfy both of the inequalities. There you go, 2, 6 satisfies both of the inequalities. Let's now compare the graph that we did manually to a graph produced by a graphing calculator. 